Hello everyone, this is Scott Bruce from Integrity Wealth Consulting with an educational economic update for May 2017. In this month's video, we'll talk about some of the major headlines that influence markets in April and about a few important first quarter reports. Please stay tuned at the end of this video for a required disclosure statement. Data for consumer spending, which accounts for more than two-thirds of U.S. economic activity, was released April 30th. It showed consumer spending increased at a 0.3% annual rate, which is the slowest pace since the fourth quarter of 2009. The economy grew at a 0.7% rate in the first quarter, which is its worst performance in three years. The Personal Consumption Expenditures, or Price Index, excluding food and energy, slipped 0.1%. This is the first and largest drop since September 2001, and after increasing 0.2% in February. In the last 12 months, the Core PCE Price Index increased 1.6%, the smallest gain since July 2016. As for the overall markets, April ended with strong monthly gains. However, U.S. equities closed lower on Friday, April 28th, when the Dow slipped about 40 points and the S&P was almost flat. Meanwhile, the Nasdaq Composite hit a record high before closing slightly lower. It's important to note the three major indexes posted a monthly advance for April of about 1%. The S&P and Dow posted their fifth positive month, while the Nasdaq recorded its sixth straight monthly gain. Most of those gains came the last week of April when stocks posted rapid rallies as corporate earnings season kept revealing strong performances from top global companies. Speaking of earnings season, this one has been strong so far, with Apple, Facebook, Tesla, and BP all reporting strong earnings. More than 75% of the companies were surpassing profit estimates, and about 70% were beating sales forecasts at the end of April. The number of companies topping profit and sales estimates this first quarter was above the five-year average. You may be wondering how quarterly corporate earnings are strong, while our economy expanded in the first quarter of this year at its slowest pace since 2014. Robust global growth is making up for the lack of domestic activity. Analysis shows the more business a U.S. company does overseas, the better its result. About 46% of S&P 500 sales overall come from foreign markets. S&P companies that earn more than half of their revenue overseas are seeing earnings growth that is twice the rate of companies that do mostly domestic business. That's it for this month's Educational Economic Update. I'm Scott Bruce. Please remember that nothing we talk about here is a recommendation. If you would like to discuss your personal financial situation, please give us a call at 724-940-9060. We'd be happy to talk.